Hey guys, it's Ted Bogert. Uh, I am back with the Ted Show on this wonderful Friday afternoon. Excited to talk about what's going on in Osceola County with Osceola Ready and feeding Osceola. And the one and only Sue Ring is going to uh, give us all of the details of what's going on. Thanks so much, uh, Sue, for being here. How are you today? I'm terrific, Ted. Thank you very much. Happy Friday. And I think Happy it's not Friday. raining for the moment. So that's kind of I know, right? Day. I'm looking on the 18th floor from downtown. Yes, guys, I'm back at the club, Citrus Club, if you, a lot of people have been asking. And it's, you can see the rain kind of coming in, but it's still mm -hmm. nice out. Gorgeous. Love Florida. All right. Good. So enough about me. Let's learn about Sue Ring before we take a deep dive into feeding us. Sure. I am a Midwesterner. I was born and raised in Chicago land, and then I went to school 150 years ago at Butler University in Indianapolis, Indiana. And I was going to do radio, television, communications. So I was going to do something like you're doing, Ted. You're a natural. I'm a natural. Well, when I graduated, I didn't get a job in radio, television, communication. So I answered an ad to be like a volunteer coordinator for some nonprofit organization. I think they asked for like people skills and, you know, a degree. And I thought I could do that. And I've been in nonprofit work ever since then. I never started my robust, you know, broadcast career. So I uh, started a nonprofit work at the Private Meals on Wheels program in Indianapolis, Indiana. I was there about 15 years. And my family said, hey, let's move to Florida. My husband had always wanted to work for Disney. And he's like, I'm going to go get a job. And I'm like, <laughs> Son of a gun, he came down and got a job. So we relocated in 2000. And after a brief stint, I started in Osceola County with the Kissimmee Osceola County Chamber of Commerce. I was the small business and downtown area council coordinator. And it wasn't, they used to tease me and say it wasn't do gooder enough. So I came over to my real job. And what I'm doing now is community vision. I'm the associate director for this organization that um, we're a convening entity that brings together the private sector, public sector, nonprofits, faith community, really look at the big picture of quality of life in Osceola County and try to tackle what those issues are. You know, our four pillars are leadership and health leadership, health equity, making sure folks have um, access to health care. This whole pandemic, we could talk. That's a whole nother show I could talk to you about. On that. It, it, it's amazing, though, what Community Vision does. I love the fact that you're like the conduit, almost like the um, you're the person everybody bounces through, has mm -hmm. to work with and coordinate. Um, what are some of the challenges that you're that you've seen? there and some of the solutions right. because I feel like private private industry wants to be involved in the nonprofit. Nonprofit needs private industry and so does private industry. They need each other in their own crazy way. Uh, but a lot of times they don't speak the same language. And so there's this paralysis that happens where nothing gets done. So you all come in and you help that out. That's exactly right. And ours, you know, it, it's we kind of look at our community as a three legged stool or solutions are a three legged stool. There's the private or the business sector, and then government does have a role. And then there's the nonprofits. And we all kind of come together to kind of, and, but you need to have equal parts. So you got a lopsided stool and, and things don't get, solutions don't happen. And, and so what we're all about, and what's really important, I think, as our community goes forward, is everybody has to be willing to listen and have an equal voice because what what the nonprofit perspective is is we'll say government doesn't understand or businesses don't understand and and really I think we all want the same we all want the same things you know a nice quality of life and good education and and jobs in a healthy community we just don't always agree exactly how to get there but if we're all willing, and so an organization like ours, if we all come together, have an equal seat at the table, and we're willing to give and take and share solutions and work collaboratively, collaboratively not any one entity has the answer. But together, we can all come together and really craft some creative solutions that really, you know, hopefully improve our quality of life. I love that. I think that we need more of that collaborative stuff. Tony Tate, thank you. He said he loves this. Um, talk to me about, I'm ready. 
to talk about yeah. Osceola ready. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's, it's Friday afternoon, guys. So Absolutely. Osceola ready, R E D I, all caps. Uh, right. Talk about what is Osceola ready? Because I think I shared with you before we went live. I honestly had not heard about it before That's you. Right. So um, I, I can't wait to hear more. So share with us. Sure. Osceola Ready was created. It's a 501c3 nonprofit organization. It was formed in 2015, actually in response to our local community that, and, and it stands for Recovery from Emergency Disaster Initiative. So obviously it is a response for, it, it's to respond in disasters. And so for many, many years, you know, Osceola County didn't really have a formal entity that could address disasters. And it's not realistic to think that we would never have one. We had tornadoes back in 1998. We had, obviously, many of us remember the hurricanes from 2004. And there wasn't really a formal system to address that. And I'll put my community vision hat on for a second. Community vision, pre-ready. That's what we did. We had a disaster relief coalition where we kind of cobbled together different partners and, and tried to get resources to address after FEMA left and after insurance came to kind of address those community issues. And then we kind of went by the wayside because, yay, we didn't have any hurricanes and needs for disasters. Well, in 2015, our local government's like, you know, we should really have a plan, a system in place, as opposed to, hey, a bunch of friends coming together and let's talk about disasters. <laughs> so myself, because I'd done some work with the Disaster Relief Coalition and some other uh, individuals who have experienced, professionals who have experience in like volunteer disaster organizations are called like VOABs and all these ac government acronyms that nobody seems to understand, but experience and working in helping communities recover from disasters. We all came together, formed Osceola Ready, and the mission is to partner with our local government, as well as the business community, and to respond in long-term recovery efforts to help Osceola County move forward from a disaster. So we're not those first responders. I don't have to. God bless the folks who have to sit in the EOC, you know, hunker down and Amen. separate. You know, I don't have to do that. We're we're deployed, for lack of a better term, once that initial response has come through and you know, the local governments are there it's to meet those unmet needs, those kind of the fill in the gaps of service. So we formed and then our first call to action was actually the UNO fire. And I don't know if anybody remembers in there was a little boutique hotel a couple of years. Actually, it was like December 23rd, I think of 2015. We had just like gotten our incorporation papers. And one of the local hotels that actually served a lot of families had a very disastrous fire. And about 200 families were displaced on December 23rd. And our wow. community was, and they were homeless. And so it's like, my gosh, what do we do? And the county wanted to respond. And a lot of folks are like, wanted to donate stuff and wanted to donate money. And so Ready was the repository of that. So we served as the agency, all the volunteers, and we're a volunteer group of maybe about 10 board members. We all got together and we, we received the money and turned around and gave it to entities that were directly helping the families. We don't fund individuals. So, you know, we, we can't pay for an individual person, but we work with our nonprofit partners and say, if you're serving families, how can we help? What gap can we fill? And that's how Ready really came to be. I love it because that's the thing there that is such a big piece that is missing from a lot of community efforts. Um, a lot of people can raise money, but they can't organize it and disperse it and um, allocate it in a way that makes not only sense for the people trying to get the services, but from a governmental perspective, from an organizational and business perspective, it can be very difficult because you're out there in the, the, the whole moment, all you want to do is raise as much money to help. And um, we'll talk about it in a minute, feeding Osceola. You want to get all of that and then you don't realize, okay, I got this money. Now what do I do? Exactly. Uh, and if you have too many chiefs and not enough Indians, it can be a real disaster trying to disperse that money, which all of us 
have experienced here in Central Florida when we raise a lot of money after after big events. Um, so yes, I totally, I love the fact that you all uh, have served that role. Right, and we continue to do so. And so we have now, now we're in our whole country, but obviously locally, we are in the middle of a pandemic. And so COVID comes along and, and it seems like in a heartbeat, we went from chugging along to everything came to a stop. I mean, I know right. we always used to joke when the theme parks closed, my gosh, the world is ending. <laughs> the theme parks are closed. It's true. And, and so, and suddenly, in, you know, families and individuals were out of work and displaced. And, and many of our business community did the best that they could. And in their defense, I mean, they went from making money to absolutely like minimal to no revenue overnight. And, and so a lot of individuals, those who already lived kind of on the edge, because we do have a very tourism service-based industry that we do, you know, our community struggles with low wages and, you know, and when you're hourly and during season, you make tons of money and when off season, maybe you don't make so much money. And so we have some folks that struggle with that anyway. And then you put everybody out of work and the system, I mean, the system just gets overloaded. And so we really see a need in food insecurity, which is a big fancy term that a lot of our displaced out of work folk are out of work and they're hungry because they don't, you know, you have our system and, and a whole nother show is to talk about our unemployment system, but. Uh, hey, listen, know. I'll talk about all the systems and the problems with the exactly but, until they get, until they get fixed. I have, that's exactly I, right. I think it's important for people to understand that the, the feeding Osceola, any kind of organization that um, wants to get food supplies to yeah the community, um, you all, a lot of times people think that it's only homeless people. And I want, you mentioned it, and that's what kind of sent a light bulb off. You mentioned how some of these people are displaced. Some of them, um, it, they could be working. They could, it, there's a lot of different people who really need the services. And a lot of the services that they might've counted on prior because of COVID got shut down. And so there were so many challenges for them. So talk a little bit about that. You, you're, we're launching, you, you launched from Osceola Ready, uh, right. Feeding Osceola. So Correct. what is Feeding Osceola gonna do? Feeding Osceola is going, is, it's a fund drive to raise money to resource our food pantries so they can feed our families. It's as simple as that, is that, you know, we already had our food pantries were already doing, you know, kind of stretched their to the limit in terms of serving individuals anyway. And then you put every a large population out of work. Folks have never been in the system. I hate to use that term, but folks have never had to reach out to a food pantry. But when you go from making money to having no income, something's got to give. And so folks who've never navigated the system at all are suddenly thrown into it. And our food pantries, we are so fortunate in Osceola County to have tremendous nonprofit and faith community that are really trying to meet the needs of folks that are, are really desperate and hurting, but the need far exceeds, and the demand far exceeds what the resources are. And so we, our local government came to us and said, and they, they infused some money into these pantries, but it can't be, just be a government response. It needs to be a community response. And that's where feeding Osceola or Osceola Ready steps in. So I, they asked us and said, hey, can you help us raise some money to help you know, resource our pantries? And we said, you know, that's why we're ready to do that. And so, so we I love that. So we launched Feeding Osceola. And as I said, it is a fund drive to raise money to um, so our food pantries can get the supplies, the food supplies they need to serve our families. We have done our due diligence that we have turned to local partners and try to get a list of Osceola pantries. We've done a survey of them to see how many people are they serving, what kind of resources do they need? Because we wanna make sure that we put dollars to the pantries to, so they can 
meet their client demand. Some pantries are larger than others. Some play different roles than others have different populations. A pantry, a large pop, or excuse me, a large pantry that say is serving a large number of families, they're going to have different food supplies and needs than maybe a smaller pantry that's working with a more chronically homeless population. And we want to make sure that we in turn 100% of the dollars that are raised, we're just turning around and giving them to the pantries. But we we have a pretty ambitious goal. It yeah, what's your goal? Talk about your goal. One hundred thousand dollars, and people will go. Have you lost your mind? And the reason why we <laughs> picked that amount is because that's what the need is. Unfortunately, as I said, our local government. Osceola County has has done what they can to infuse dollars into our pantries, but they can't do it alone. And that number, very honestly, will probably would take care of our pantries for maybe a month. If you visit feedingosceola.org, you will see different statistics on how much the increase in demand. We've seen pantries that their demand has doubled, you know, gone up 60%. They've gone from serving 50 people to 150 people in a week that, you know, what a thousand dollars used to provide you know, they need 10 times that now to meet the demand for, for, and we're talking about food. I mean, we're a basic need We're we're not paying anything else, just trying to put food in the bellies of hungry Osceola residents. And so, you know, $59 feeds like a senior and, you know, you can feed a family for a few hundred dollars. And, and I know that our community, it's hard. We have to dig deep because many in our community, they, they've been out of work or their hours have been cut. And we, and that's true for our business community. And, um, you know, there, we ha all have to dig deep, but we recognize that the need is there. And I know that our community responds again, we are so fortunate in Osceola County and really across our country, but I'm going to pick on Osceola County because that's <laughs> where I am. We respond to our, to our residents in need. And, and that is true across all populations and all socioeconomic um, populations that People dig deep. And so if I've only got $5, I'll give a dollar to know that I'm helping my fellow Osceola resident. And so, again, you can visit feedingosceola.org to learn more about um, how those dollars are going to be helping our fellow residents. And as I said, we're they're just 100% going to food. So we just turn around, collect the money, give it to the pantry so they can put together those food packages to serve our residents in need. So talk about um, the collaboration part a little bit, because you all are working all together for this this big need. And I think that people don't understand that the need, uh, just because you're in Seminole County or Orange County or pick a county, it doesn't matter. There is a need that some of those resources that people went to are dried up. And so feedingosceola.org is just such an important um, collaborative kind of thing that you're doing, because these people will don't have the resources you think. It's not just as easy as you think to go to the store. What if you're furloughed? What if you, and also all of the shortages that went on, um, you're, you were challenged with that. So a lot of people were going hungry that maybe had never been hungry before. And and that's been really, a very eye-opening for so many, not only in the provider side of it, but as well as our community, itself. We've got folks who've never been, never thought that they would ever have to visit a food pantry, never thought that they would have to ask, and food is just a piece of it. We haven't talked about rental assistance or paying your utility bills. But I mean, we have folks that just, you know, they, they've they exhausted their, if they were able to have a safety net, you know, how many of us can, you know, go day at week after week after week with no or very limited incomes. And, and we're not talking, I, I mean, it, it, it's across the board. It's not just those um, hourly workers. But when you think about our industry, you know, a big theme park lays off people and sure, they're 
impacted, but all those little in, ancillary businesses that support it, whether it's the restaurant down the street that used to have a bunch of tourists that would come by and get something to eat either before they go to the park or after they go to the park, the souvenir shop, you know, the vacation rentals, it, you know, who cleans those vacation rentals, it all trickles down and it shows how we're all interconnected both in terms of need, but also in terms of response. And so again, it, it takes all of us from that business community, from our local government, from individuals, from our faith community. And, and again, I, I can't praise our nonprofits enough for they are doing really miracles in, in trying to take what little resources. And, and again, the demand has exploded that, you know, and plus when you think of these poor little nonprofits, those folks who have been in a position to give money to support them, they may not be in a position anymore. Or they say, you know, XYZ business who says, hey, I, you know, my favorite nonprofit, I used to give you X amount of dollars a month or X amount of dollars in January, I give you money. I'm like, I don't have those resources right now. When I open back up, I, you know, count me in. But in the meantime, I'm, I'm not in a position to do that. Or the business it's a very, it's very trying. I also know people who have had to um, utilize the service that they may have given money to in the past when uh, they were. So I guess my, my biggest shout out to anybody is don't let any kind of stigma or yourself, your Absolutely. perceptions of, uh, well, I used to give to that. I can't possibly take from there. Listen, when you're hungry, you should do whatever you can and on it, you planted the seed. Uh, take it, take, take the, um, take the assistance, take the support. Uh, Cindy Lewis, I'd be remiss if I didn't share that she said, thank you, Sue. Ring for all that you're doing with Osceola Ready and our community. Thank you, um, Sue. She gave a big shout out to you. All right, so let's say somebody wants to give, somebody wants to get involved, somebody yeah. wants to know Sue better. What's the best way for people to reach out? If you can, again, we are primarily, this campaign, Feeding Osceola, is focusing on doing dollars. The, and then I, we never want to discourage people say like, well, I want to do a food drive. And, and I, I'm sure you ask any of our local pantries, they will gladly take your, your canned goods or your non-perishables and that plays a role. This specific campaign though is focusing on dollars, mostly because we want to put the control in those pantries, know what they need. And plus they're so good at kind of working with their partners, whether it's through Second Harvest or another entity, you know, to maximize those resources, to take that $1 really turns into $2 or $10 worth of food. They can donate directly through, a, you know, a credit card, you know, visit feedingosceola.org. You can donate directly on the website. If you prefer to mail a check, you can mail it to Osceola Ready at 704 Generation Point Suite 101 and Beautiful Kissimmee, Florida, 34744. If you have questions for me, you want to learn a little bit more about Osceola Ready. As you know, I was talking to Ted earlier, and many Osceola Ready is not a household name. You can see if you think of some other, even disaster organizations like the Red Cross or, or Salvation Army, you know, those are household names. Osceola Ready, I bet if you asked 100 people on the street, not one of them is going to say, oh, sure, I know exactly what they do. Which I guess, you know, we joke about it's a good thing because it means we haven't been called into action a lot because we're a disaster response organization. True. <laughs> but when we are called into action, you know, there is a learning curve. And so, excuse me, if folks want to learn more about Osceola Ready and whether it's this initiative or just the organization itself, they're more than welcome to call me directly at 407-933-0870. Again, they can visit the Osceola Ready website that tells a little bit more about our previous work with the hurricanes as well in the UNO fire and also some information about the Feeding Osceola effort because we're not a household name, but our intent is pure to just, again, this campaign is all about getting the resources so we can feed our, feed our community. 
you're the dream guest because I didn't have to do much. So thank <laughs> you. I um, can ramble as much as you want. Love, you know what? It's endearing. And I think people want to see passion and excitement and concern and all of the wonderful emotions that you showed when you were talking about feeding Osceola and Osceola Ready and Community Vision. I, I think it's super important. So thank you for what you thank all you are very, doing. Very much. Feedingosceola.org. Reach out to Sue Ring. I tagged her. Reach out to me. You all get involved in your community. If you have questions, uh, you want to know uh, the best way to help out. Obviously, this particular one is a fund fundraise, fundraise, um, something like fundraise. that. It's something fun. Duh. Uh, so please reach out. Uh, you're a joy. Thank you so much, Sue Ring. Thank for you, being Todd. Thank you very much. Thank All you. All right, guys. We'll see you back later. Mwah. Have a good day. Bye, guys. This is the fun part. So we're almost out.